when I graduated in 61, uh, here I was all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. I had the world by the tail, and I knew everything. And at that time, someone said to me, uh, do you think that we'll ever understand the genetic code, uh, the chemistry of life? This is in 1961, and I said, in all my uh, great erudition, I said, impossible. Maybe in uh, 50 or 60 years, we'll know something, but certainly not before then. And that very fall, the first bit of information came in, and within five years, the whole thing was solved. Now, the rapidity with which breakthroughs are made is staggering. And to talk about the world 50 years or 100 years from now is absolutely insane. We can't even conceive of what the world will be like in 50 years. I can barely try to project 10 years from now. Now, what's happening in Canada and the United States today? We are having a tremendous outpouring of scientific knowledge and and technological innovation that's coming onto us every day. I mean, we can go to the store anytime and buy all sorts of new little plastic goodies that are the products of technology and science. And we're, we're being polluted, in a sense, with this all of the time. And we've never really sat down to evaluate what the long-term consequences of this are. And until we do that, we are setting ourselves up for a, a very dangerous situation where we do something, 10 years later we'll say, my God, we've got to stop, it's bad, and it may be too late. Now there are two very good examples of this where we've, we've pulled back, I think, maybe in time. One is uh, fallout. We tested bombs like mad and, and the AEC said, no, there's no effect of that. Uh, it's trivial, it, it'll all fall down in a matter of a few months. And, and then and suddenly we started picking it up in milk. And the dead cows in Nevada. And so well, that was something else, that was gas. But the point is our Eskimos now have livers that are hotter than anything that's supposed to be uh, acceptable. There's nothing we can do about it, but we stopped testing. DDT was the same way. Man, it wiped out bugs like you wouldn't believe. And now what, what are we paying for? We're, we're paying for pelicans probably becoming extinct. The American symbol is probably going to go extinct in the United States. And with a little forethought, we could have avoided that. Now take another example where I don't think much thought has gone in. The pill. Now for those people concerned about population, and it is a problem, the pill holds out a tremendous hope. And yet no one has ever considered the question, what happens if half the women in America are on the pill and they're excreting this excess of hormone every day in their urine and it goes down the toilets every day? Well, if you calculate how much that comes out to, it comes to tons every year. Tons of female hormones are being poured down the drain. And has anyone asked the simple question, what happens when you do that? Now, unless we can set up some body that will stop that before it's too late, I feel 20 years is all we have. We're going to go down the tube.